Hey guys, wouldn't be making a video right now, but I have to cry out somewhere. I was supposed to be asleep right now. I got woke out of a two-hour sleep with so much severe burning in my throat, I thought I was going to die. Uh, don't know what caused it. I'm a little better now after Mom helping me doctor myself up like I was dying in a hospital bed. But uh, right now, I got a heating pad over my throat. Uh, I cannot sleep. Or, I mean, I, you know, I can't lay back down. I'm too scared to do it. Um, and it was funny the whole time I was literally scared did not know what was going on and I was hurting all over my throat and my chest and I don't know if it's benzo withdrawal I don't know if I ate something I don't know if it's COVID I don't know what the fuck and you know I'm scared like I didn't know what was going on this was just about 40 minutes ago and She's gone, by the way. That's why I'm able to talk. She went with my sister. And I'm sitting here, you know, when all this happened. Of course, she helped me with that. I literally couldn't. I was scared to death, man. And she basically, you know, she's just going on and on, man. You know, oh, you're not that bad. Oh, you're this. Toughen up. You know, man up. She didn't say that, but that was what it was. Man up. Um... And as she was waiting for my sister to come pick her up, who was taking forever to come pick her up, you know, sometimes you go blue, black pill and red pill on them. You start telling the truth. And she's just telling me, oh, you're just, you know, and she'll say things like this to me, man. Boy, you're going to pay one day for all that you've done. Now, here I am sitting here literally dying. I don't know what happened. I have no idea. And she'll tell me, you know, because I didn't do this in life, and I didn't do that. And she'll always say this, you know. Uh, she doesn't understand why my life is so bad. Oh, you're just not trying hard enough. Oh, you're just this, and you're just that. You just ain't tough. And all this nonsense, man. And, I mean, I'm not able right now to really talk about what I want to talk about, but I'm going to make a vi I planned on making a video on this one day. And I definitely am going to make it now. Is how the boomers, because my mom's a boomer, they don't realize how that it's not that we're way worse. Than, I'm, a, I'm a Gen X. Well, I'm right at the end of Gen X, right at the baby. I mean, the, the baby boom. Uh, I'm right at millennial. I'm almost a millennial. I, I could probably pass for a millennial. Uh, but I'm, I was right at the tail end of Gen X, right at the beginning of a millennial. And, you know, she doesn't realize her and my father, who's dead and in the damn grave. Thanks, Dad, by the way, wherever you are. Uh, they don't realize how life was laid out for them, that it was so easy. And they didn't do much with it. They lived uh, uh, black pill prescriptions again, man. He nailed it that people live their lives in easy mode. They could have done more in their life. Like That'd be like me if I didn't have to go to college. I could just go out and get a good job. If I did not have autism, uh, if I did not have benzo withdrawal, if all of that was gone and I could have gone to college and gotten at least a two-year associate's degree, at least, I'd be pretty set right now. But I, could, I didn't have any of that. None of it. Not one. And I get it online that it's my fault. Oh, it's your fault. It's like, dude, you don't know anything. Man. You just don't know anything. And I noticed that I get a lot of views from people that are older. Not old, old, but like one of my videos was almost 100% 35 to 44-year-old men. Well, once again... That's late. That's Gen X to near baby boom. That's close. Once again, wasn't as bad for them. The baby boomers had it the best. The Gen Xers had it a little bit worse, but it wasn't severe yet. They were the first group that started seeing the change. Then the millennials really started seeing it. And, of course, now the Gen Zers are going to really face it unless something drastically changes in the country. Just this absolute hopelessness. Uh, 
And it was funny that I just went off. She was sitting there. I didn't you know, cuss at her or anything, but I just told her, I said, you just don't know what we go through. You know, you don't know. And say to know she's going to have to introspect. I used to not even know how bad I had it. I used to blame myself. I thought, oh, maybe they're right. You know, I am just kind of a loser. Nah, my dad didn't do much with his life. Now, he had a good job because he was able to get one. He didn't go to college. My dad barely got through high school. He told my mom that. He cheated off of a girl for several years. He told her that. That's how he got through school. My dad was a Chad, by the way. Uh, or an alpha, whatever you want to call it. So my dad was able to get a decent job. My dad made close to about forty to 50000 with no, uh, with barely a high school diploma, no college education. Yeah, he went and trained. My dad also was, was neurotypical. He wasn't autistic, as far as I know. I mean, I never met the asshole, but... Uh, I mean, I knew him a little. He died a week before my fifth birthday. But, uh, see, they don't know. They, they don't know anything because they had everything laid out for them. They don't. I'm not able to get into it right now. I'm too sick. But, man, when I'm well, I'm going to plan that video out and just say, I, I shouldn't even be talking, but when I get done with this, I'm just going to try to lean back and try to relax. And she'll just say things like that to me. Boy, you know, one day you're going to wish you were dead. It's like she wants me to be miserable. I don't I don't understand that, man. I don't want my kids to be miserable. I want my kids to be happy if I had them. And, you know, I'll tell her what a disadvantage in life I have. You know? Like, there's nothing I can do to change this now. Nothing. I tried last year again. Wanted to go to college. Told me I couldn't go. Well, you know what? I was going to. I can't go to no big college. I have no money. I said, "Well, I'll try to get an associate's degree." Now I've been trying to go to college since I was 22 years old. Actually, but no, since I was 19 years old, <laughs> I've been trying to go to college. It's absolutely ridiculous, man. There's a lot of guys, they never tried to go to college. Or they went, got in easily, and they quit their ass. Couldn't do it. So they quit. At, at a community college. Shit. Hell, I was going to go to a major Christian college. I couldn't afford it. And I aced the test. The beginner's test. I actually got to take that test. I aced it. I could have done it. The... One of the the main men of the school actually called me into the office that day. I had gotten a call because you had to come for a day and do all that, and then they showed you around campus. I was 19 years old. No, I was 18. Yeah, I had not even turned 19 yet. And he calls me in. He thought I he knew I looked young. You know, cause you got to remember I was very I was young back then. I was very slim. I was basically a rail. I was short. And he looks right at me and goes, you know, have you been to college anywhere else? And I was like, no, I've, I've never been anywhere. He was amazed how well I did on that test. I was very smart. It was They were asking me uh, religious history, theological history, philosophical history. And I almost aced the test. I got one of the highest grades, he told me. Because I was smart. And I was serious about it. And then I found out, because I didn't have my little magical piece of paper, a high school diploma, even though I never dropped out of school, absolutely went all the way through, but didn't pass one part of a stupid exit exam, I don't get to get a diploma. Oh, I got a certificate of achievement, that's what it was called. Guess what? Does nothing for high school. I might as well have quit school and tried to get a GED. So all of that was a waste of my time. And there's nobody I can talk to about that now. They're all old and dead. Anytime I mention that online, man, I, I mean, some idiot put a comment on one of my videos. Well, I don't understand. Why don't you try to get some government help? They can take... Dude, that ain't the problem. I can't go. They won't let me go, man. 
They were like, did you even try to go? Dude, I've tried to go to college since I was 19. It's fucking ridiculous. No, what it is, it's got to be something. It's got to be me. It's got to be that I'm lazy, you know? And I'm just, I'm so tired of that, man. It's because you don't know shit, man. Boy, the red pill and the black pill, it's a hard pill to swallow. Man, it, those pills are hard to take down, man. It's fitting they, that it's referred to in pills. It's buddy, when you learn the truth, man. And you can just tell how much easier people had it than me. They can't fathom it. It doesn't make sense. No, it's got to be that I fucked my life up. That's what it has to be. It can't be that my country fucked me over. And here's how I know the whole education system's full of shit. Uh, you know, yeah, I don't mean to be so mad in this video. I said I wasn't going to do it. I just, I don't care, man. If people don't want to watch the video, don't watch it. Uh, you know, I mean, I have so many things happen. It's amazing I haven't taken a gun and shot myself. It's unbelievable. I'm not even supposed to be alive. Most autistic people don't live past my age. I'd be dead right now, which would be pretty good, man. I wouldn't mind being dead and out of this world. There's nothing to live for in it, so why would I want to be in it? For what? But, yeah, to, to show you how I know the education system is full of shit, uh, and that the country's full of shit. Now, I can't go to college. Born an American citizen, born here. My family has been in this country for at least eight to nine generations. We were some of the original settlers that built this fucking country, man. And I can't go to college. I can't have the life of my own because I don't have a magical little piece of paper. But I was watching back in 2012 the Republican debate for, pre for president. And Texas's governor, who was running for president, Rick Perry, was talking about giving illegal immigrants free college education. What the fuck? Illegal immigrants free college education. Number one, they ain't supposed to be in the damn country. So why are they getting anything? Number two... Most of those illegal immigrants back in that day were coming from Mexico. Their education system is 10,000 times worse than ours. Most of them had an 8th grade education. And they get to go to college for free? And I can't go, period? I, don't, I wouldn't even get the... I would not even get the blessing. Not even get the fucking blessing of having to pay my way through college and they get it for free, man, you talk about black pills. I'll never forget that day. I thought, this is a fucking scam. It's just a scam. It's a lie. Why should they get to go to college? They're not able. They didn't have a piece of paper. They didn't have a diploma from their own goddamn country. They didn't have a, a diploma. But they can come to the United States and go to a major university and not only do they get to go, the co government will literally pay their way. Are you fucking serious? And then we were told during that debate by that governor, well, you just don't have a heart if you don't want this. Started. Are you fucking serious? You don't have a heart? How about me, man? I have nothing disabled by my country. Got put on a vacation by my country. It was never told how dangerous it was. Never was told. And told I was lying when I went through it. Which I'm still in today. And could have caused this very day. Because that's why I woke up. I was in so much severe pain. I mean, I don't even know what to say. I even lost track of my thought. It's just so disgusting, man. I tell you, man, if I ever won a lot of money, I'd leave. I, I would, man. If I could go to a country where people spoke English because I can't, I ain't, I ain't got no way to learn another language right now. Man, if I got well, I'd leave this damn country. I hate this place now. And this is what... <coughs> oh. 
this is what boomers don't understand when you know you hear people disrespecting the flag. And I ain't talking about the blacks. I'm not getting into that crap. But this is what the boomers don't understand. You know, this is what they don't understand. They're thinking of the America of old. America did used to be a great country. It was the greatest country on earth. It truly was. It really was. No country has achieved what the United States achieved. None. But it's not that country anymore, man. It's not any of that anymore. And they don't understand that. For us, those opportunities are gone. And for the next generations, it's getting lower and lower, whether they're good people or not. Those American dream opportunities are gone. We're in a country where white people are being discriminated against especially white men. We're in a country where women and minorities and, you know, of all of all types, including gays, you know, the, they get hammered and we don't. They get helped and we don't. We're told we're awful people. I I'm told every day that I have privilege. All this crap. Privilege privilege my fucking ass. Hell, if this is privilege, uh, can you give me something worse? Can you give me something better than privilege? I'll probably regret making this video. I probably shouldn't have said it because YouTube will mark me. Because, you know, that's another thing. We don't even have the freedom to say what we want. If women are around, we have to speak through a filter. If minorities are around, we got to speak through a filter. It's just disgusting. On, if we go on a, a website like YouTube or a Facebook or a Instagram or a Twitter, we have to speak through a filter and we'll get banned. Our channel will get demonetized and banned because we're not allowed to speak the truth. People would tell us that we have the best of America, that our ancestors didn't have it near as good as us, and in some ways they're correct. Our ancestors had it a lot harder than us. They had to work very, you know, a lot harder. They died younger. But our ancestors also had what they needed to get them through life, to give them an ounce of happiness. They had a religious country, the most Christian country on earth, which is what the United States was. They had uh, families. Most of the men got married very young, and actually, you know, unless their wife died, which that was one of the, you know, things they had that we don't have to deal with as much. If their wife didn't pass away, they had a good long marriage and had lots of children and got respect as a husband. None of that exists hardly for us today. Many of them throughout history many times were able to own land and have comfortable lives for the day and time they lived. It wasn't perfect, but it was comfortable, you know, for their day and time. And then my my, my direct family, my, my grandparents and parents, were able to get a good job and have a family and have the wife stay home and the husband be the breadwinner. He had to work hard, but he was respected. He was respected as the man of the house, the king of the castle. Are men getting that today? <laughs> I don't think so. Nobody discriminated against. Yes, blacks had it worse. I won't deny that. I'm not justifying everything that happened. But reverse racism doesn't defend anything. Reverse racism doesn't correct it. Reverse racism doesn't make it okay. You just trade one racism for another. And it's true. That's why a lot of us hate the country. Now, we don't hate the country because we're just anti American, that we're communist. If anything, we hate communism. Hell, if we wanted to hate America, we'd just go to university. <laughs> That'll teach you to hate America more than anything. So, yeah, pretty much in closing, yeah, 
many of us hate America, not because we just hate the country. We hate America because that wasn't offered us. The American dream was not offered to us. Some of us, it was over before it began. Yeah, I can't wait to see the comments for this video. Oh, yeah. Yeah, what do you do? You don't do anything. You just got to get through it. Sorry, guys, if the volume was low. I had a, I have a fan on me, and I've got a heating pad on my throat. I'm just so damn tired of this. I'm just tired of having so many barriers that got in my way. I just wasn't allowed to have a basic American life. And there was nothing I could have done about it. And then I get no support from anybody. They don't care. Because they'd have to admit, oh my gosh, I had it better than him. You know, I had it better than him. I didn't have a bunch of barriers in my way, and I still didn't do much in my life. That's what they don't want to admit. They didn't have autism since they were very, 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 very young. I've had it at least since I was three years old, at least. They didn't grow up without a father. Losing my father before my fifth birthday. The week before my fifth birthday. My father was 32 years old. He died of cancer. Most of them didn't have that problem. They didn't go without their father. We now know the, the detriment of that. And number three, many of them have never, and never will, go through the horrors of benzo withdrawal which we know is one of the worst withdrawals you could possibly go through. Todd Thundercock on his live stream one time, one of the guys, he knew how bad it was. I heard him, he went, oh, that's what he's going through. He said, that's one of the worst things I've ever heard of, the benzo withdrawal. He said, I've heard it's a nightmare. <laughs> you don't know the half of it, buddy. That's one, no father. Two, autism. Three, benzo withdrawal, which has lasted me years and years. It's taken a quarter of my life now. That's three strikes. Shane, you're out. Too many strikes. Well, guys, I'm going to go ahead and get off here. Can't wait to see the comments on this video. I'm sure it'll be real supportive. There'll be some that are. And all y'all that show me support, I do appreciate it. I guess you just get on here because you have nowhere else to go. If I was married, matter of fact, let me check, let me erase that. If I had not had autism growing up, I wouldn't be on here probably. If I had a father and had grown up with my dad, I probably wouldn't be on here. If I could have gone to university or at least college at least something even the Bible college I, I tried to go to and been a minister or a missionary which is what I wanted to do when I was 18 to 19 years old if that could have happened I wouldn't be on here but that wasn't allowed for me either and finally if I had not gone through the horrors of benzo withdrawal the nightmare and all the videos, they're online. You can watch every single one of them. You want to see my journey? Go watch it. I put it online. I'll never do it again. Uh, and I would have took taken every one of them off, but people told me that, that saw it, that it helped them because they saw that they weren't alone. But if I hadn't had all that happen, not only would I not be on here right now, none of those YouTube videos would exist. But it all happened, so I'm here. All four of those things happened, so I'm here. If I had people that gave it, if I wasn't a man, I wouldn't be here. If I was a woman, I'd go out and find me a loser man. I'd just go out and find me some dumbass beta provider. Go out and find some simp 
that would bail me out and pay all my bills and take care of me. He could be my retirement plan. <laughs> Happening in my family as we speak. I've got at least two or three women doing that. No, I'm a man. I don't get those things. So nobody cares, and that's why I'm here. Well, I'm done, guys. Have a good one. Take care, and uh, just pray for me. God's about the last thing I have. And sometimes I wonder if even He's there. Take care, guys. Have a good one. We'll talk to you soon.